everybody, and welcome to your first lab of your fully online biology lab course. So cool to be doing labs in the comfort of your living room, right? Well, this is Roxy, and she's going to be my lab partner for today. Hi, Roxy. Hi. Hey, hi to everybody. All right, so um, I hope you're excited to get started. I know you've been waiting to open up that lab in a box kit and start using the stuff, so today you get to do that. Now notice we're not wearing our PPE. We're not wearing our lab coat or our goggles and our gloves, and that's because this is a dry lab. We're not using any chemicals. We're not in a real lab setting. So we're okay today to not have our PPE on, but future labs, absolutely, you'll be in few, full gear. All right, so uh, this first lab activity is called Thinking Like a Scientist, Introduction to the Scientific Method and the Metric System. So you're gonna be learning to apply the steps of the scientific method that you um, learned about in the lecture course. And I'll provide a link to that lecture in case you need a review. But just as a real quick review, remember that the scientific method involves making observations, asking questions about what you observed, developing a hypothesis, an educated guess to answer those questions, developing an experiment to see if you support or reject, never prove true, but support or reject your hypothesis. And every good experiment involves control replication. And then collecting that data, analyzing it using some sort of statistics, like taking an average or a mean, and then coming up with results based on your data and conclusions. So what does your data mean? Have you supported or rejected your hypothesis? And if enough labs around the world come to the same conclusions, maybe you might have created a theory. Um, so theories in science carry lots of weight, and future people will go out and test those theories by making observations, asking questions, developing hypotheses, et cetera, et cetera, and the cycle of science continues, which it makes it so beautiful. So you can see in this uh, lab activity, we're going to be utilizing the scientific method of inquiry for explaining observations. We're also going to get familiar with the metric system and how to measure things in the metric system and how to make conversions um, between numbers within the metric system and between systems, between the English system and the metric system. You'll also be learning to illustrate your data graphically, so creating a graph, developing an experimental design, and, uh, and as we said, performing conversions. So I'm just going to guide you through um, your lab handout and how you're going to fill it out and how you're going to do the procedures. So again, if you need a, a review of the scientific method, you can watch that lecture and also you can read here where it kind of goes over everything. So I'll just keep scrolling down. Here are the materials you will need for this lab activity. So we're going to go through these. Some of them, most of them are from your lab in a box kit, but there will be a couple items that you need from either home around your house or you might need to make a run to the grocery store or the um, home improvement store. So here's what you're going to need from your lab in a box kit. You're going to need your trusty 12 inch ruler. You're also going to need your trusty 6 inch ruler, so that's the clear one. Okay, and the way you look at this, um, this has both the English and the metric system on it. The English system are the big intervals between numbers, so those are inches. On the other side, you have small intervals between numbers, and those are centimeters, so that's the metric system. And every little teeny tiny tick within that is called a millimeter. Um, so you'll have 10 millimeters um, within a centimeter. Okay, what else are you going to need? A nickel? Well, hold on. The nickel comes from home, so we're going over what's from the lab in the box right now. Okay, so you're also going to need your electronic balance, your little digital scale. It comes in a box like this. When you take it out, it looks like this. Now, you will need to make sure that you have acquired batteries for this thing. It takes two AAA batteries, so make sure you have some working batteries. And I'll be showing you a little bit later on exactly how to work this thing. You also are going to need your aluminum weigh boat. Okay, so aluminum weigh boat. And so those are the things you need from your lab in a box kit. Now, as Roxy was saying, you also need from around the house, you probably maybe in the, check the couch cushions, you need a nickel. Okay, so just a five cent nickel. And you're also going to need a thermometer of some kind. Now, I got this one for about $3 at Home Depot, um, but it could be all sorts of kinds of thermometers. It could be a digital thermometer or a glass thermometer used to take people's temperatures. Um, and it's ideal if you can read degrees Celsius, um, but it doesn't have to. If you only have a Fahrenheit thermometer, that's okay, too, because we'll be doing conversions. Um, and you'll need a partner for this. 
So I got Roxy here as my partner. You'll need a thumb wrestling partner, and you'll also need to go out and find other thumb wrestlers, um, maybe within your household and your neighbors at the, gro at the grocery store or the mall, whatever. Okay, so we're going to get started in this first part of the pre-lab lecture with the scientific method activity. Um, and so I'm going to go through and show you how you're going to fill out these charts and what you're going to have to do. So again, we're practicing the scientific method in kind of a fun way by thumb wrestling. So first thing we're going to do, and you remember the first step of the scientific method is to make observations. So Roxy and I are going to hold our thumbs up and we're going to look at our thumbs and say, ah, it looks like they are different lengths. My thumb looks bigger than Roxy's thumb. So we're not going to measure them yet. We're just going to look at them. And so I'm going to put in here my observation, my observed differences in thumb lengths between me and Roxy, Roxy and I. So my thumb looks longer than Roxy's thumb. Now, I'm not going to actually measure them yet because I don't want to develop what's called experimenter bias. If I, if I knew what my length was versus hers, that might affect the way I thumb wrestle her. So um, what I'm going to do is first come up with a hypothesis, an educated guess that is quantitative, that can be measured to determine if it's supported or rejected. So I'm going to come up with a hypothesis that people with th longer thumbs will win more thumb wrestling matches. Okay, so that's my hypothesis. I can support it with the data or I can reject it. And again, you can never prove anything true in science. There could always be another explanation you hadn't thought of, but I can support it or reject it. So I'm looking at the effect of thumb length on the outcome of thumb wrestling competitions. And now I actually want to do my experiment. So you see a little picture here of what um, a thumb wrestling match looks like. And Roxy and I are going to demo how to do this. Now, we've practiced this before, so I'm going to erase our data from the previous match. And so this will constitute our match number one of this experiment. We're going to thumb wrestle, determine who wins and who loses, and then we're going to go and measure our thumb lengths. Okay, so here's how we're going to thumb wrestle. Roxy, can bring your thumbs right up to the camera there. Okay, ready? And let's go. One, two, three, four. I declare a thumb war. And then you try to get the other person's thumb down for a count of three. One, One two, two, three. three. Were you even trying? <laughs> okay. So then you're going to come down and write who won and who did not win, who lost. So I'm going to type in Bree here and Roxy here. Okay. So I won. Roxy lost. Now, at this point, I'd go and measure our thumb lengths. Now, again, we had a practice round before we started filming this, so we already wrestled and then recorded our thumb lengths. So just make sure you're recording the thumb lengths after the match here. And what's really important is to make sure that you're recording the data in exactly the same way for every person. So we're trying to control for how we take our measurements. Um, we don't want to add in extra variables by measuring each person a different way because it's maybe that biases the results, right, the data. So I'm going to say I'm going to measure thumb length by taking this little notch holding the ruler down on the centimeter side, stretching out my thumb and measuring to the very tip. And so I have 5.9 centimeters. And so I record that in the book, in the box right here, because I'm the winner. And Roxy's gonna hold her thumb up and I'm gonna do hers exactly the same way. Hold, hold this out, finding the notch, you know, using the metric system and going to the tip. And I find that hers is 5.3 centimeters. So here are our data. So that's the first match. But we don't want to stop there because that's just us. How do we know that the outcome of our thumb wrestling match based on the length of thumbs is representative for other thumb wrestling matches of the world? So we want to get more data points. We want to go and have a larger sample size by going out and finding more people to have thumb wrestling matches. Okay, so um, before we do that, though, let's just record that so far we've supported our hypothesis that people with longer thumbs win more thumb wrestling matches, right? So I'm going to put a check mark here. And if you wanted to do that in uh, the computer, if you have Word, now if you're a Mac person, it can't help you much, but um, you could go up to insert, go over to where it says symbol, and hit a little check mark there, and it comes up. Okay, um, if you wanted to put an X instead of a check mark, you could do that too. All right, so now I'm going to go out and I'm going to have four more matches, four more sets of thumb wrestling competitions. And I'm going to do this by going out and finding four more pairs of people. I don't want to use ourselves again because that would be what you call pseudo replication. I want to find four different pairs of people. So maybe I go to the neighborhood and I find uh, several pairs of people here. 
And so I went and I had each pair thumb wrestle with each other. Okay, so this is not her or I, these are different sets of other people. So maybe John and Jeremy, I have found them and I had them wrestle each other, thumb wrestle each other exactly the same fashion that Roxy and I thumb wrestled. Okay, so same rolls, same way, et cetera. And then after their thumb wrestling match, I took the same ruler and I measured their thumb lengths in exactly the same way I measured ours. And here's what I found. So the winner had a length of six centimeters and the loser had a length of 3.2 centimeters. It's a little guy, maybe like a three-year-old. And then I go and find an additional set of people, maybe Amy and Charlie. And I measured their thumbs after their thumb wrestling competition, et cetera, et cetera. So all the way till um, I got four additional sets of people thumb wrestling. So we take our set that we had plus these four sets here. And now what I'm going to do is take a mean or an average of the data of each group. So um, my thumb length was 5.9 and I was a winner. So I'm going to take 5.9 plus 6 plus 5.3 plus 4.2 plus 6.4 and divide by the total number of data points for that group, which is five. Okay, so that would become my mean or my average. And then for the losers, same thing. Uh, Roxy's data was 5.3. So I'll take 5.3 plus 3.2 plus 6.4 plus 6.3 plus 5.7, divide by five, and that will be the mean or the average for the loser group. And then I will plot those means into these boxes right here. Okay, so I'll take the mean of the winners, put it in there, the mean of the losers, put it in there. And it asks you to show your work. So um, over here in the margin, or you can expand this by, you know, if you hit enter, it'll make it larger. Um, I want you to actually show how you calculated an average by adding those up and dividing each group by five. Okay, and then you're going to actually create a graph because graphs are great ways to represent your data, the, the results of your data in a pictorial fashion, which is a lot more interesting than just looking at a bunch of numbers and a lot easier to kind of see what the overall conclusion was. So I've made a grid here for you and I've made some axes. So this is the Y axis, also called the independent variable. And this is the X axis where your dependent variable goes. So the dependent variable is dependent on what the experimenter sets. So in this case, we are setting two groups, winners and losers. So I'd have a category here, maybe I'd call it W for winners, and a category here, maybe L for losers, and I'd have a little key over here or a legend that would say W equals winners, L equals losers, so I'd know what I'm talking about. I'd give my graph an appropriate title. Um, so this graph, you know, maybe I'd give it a title like the effect of thumb length on the outcome of thumb wrestling competition. And I'd label my independent variable, also called the response variable because it's how our data is responding to the categories we set. And um, I would have um, a scale here, so I'd have numbers indicating the um, span of thumb length. So if the longest person's thumb was seven centimeters, or maybe it was 6.7 centimeters, I might have seven as the largest uh, value here, and I'd have like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And it, over here, I'd label my axis mean thumb length, parentheses cm for centimeters. And then I, this is going to be a column graph, so a graph that shows the mean, not the individual data points, but the mean thumb length of the winners and of the losers. Um, and so how you can do this in a computer, um, I'll let you guys use your creativity. You could do a graph in Excel if you know how to do that. Otherwise, you could go to these shapes and start inserting, you know, shapes here like um, rectangles and stuff to make it. You can color them different colors. So uh, if you have questions on that, let me know um, on the discussion board and I can help you out or come to my virtual office hours. Um, anyway, so you're going to create a column graph showing the comparing the means between the winners and the losers. So we can see if we've supported or rejected the idea that people with longer thumbs win more thumb wrestling matches. All right, and finally, you're going to look at your graph, look at your means, and come up with a conclusion as to whether you've supported or rejected your hypothesis. And you'll write that in here. So um, keep in mind, I don't want to see someone say, I've proven my hypothesis true, because no, you haven't. You haven't proven anything in science. There could always be another explanation you hadn't thought of. But you can say whether you've supported or rejected your hypothesis, or whether you've rejected or failed to reject your hypothesis is another way of saying it, and explain it. Explain why you came to that conclusion. 
So for example, we supported our hypothesis that people with longer thumbs win more thumb wrestling matches because our mean um, thumb length of the winners was blah, 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 and our mean thumb length of the losers was blah, 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 okay? And finally, we're gonna come up with what are called sources of error um, for our experiment. Things that um, we could not control for that might have had an effect on the outcome of our experiment. So for example, maybe with all the different pairs of people, all the matches, maybe we didn't control for whether their elbows were on a table or not. Maybe some had their elbows on a table, some didn't. Maybe we didn't control for handedness, like I'm a lefty and she's a righty, you know. Um, maybe we didn't control for whether we had the same length of hair or not. Whoever, who, who knows, right? It could be a million things that could have contributed to the outcome of competition besides thumb length. And so we want to cite those sources of error, recognizing that future studies might want to try to control for those things to get um, a more believable result. And finally, as we said, the cycle of inquiry continues. Um, the scientific method keeps on going. The results and conclusions of one study lead to more questions. Okay, so maybe thumb length is responsible for who wins um, thumb wrestling matches, but maybe it's something else. Maybe uh, whoever is the strongest is going to be more likely to win thumb wrestling contests. We didn't control for that or test for it in the previous experiment. So maybe you do something like take a rubber band and put it on your thumb and index finger and measure the length that the person can stretch. You know, maybe that's how we do it. Who knows? Maybe whoever has the longer hair wins more thumb wrestling matches so we could measure hair length. Who knows, right? There's an infinite possibility of explanations that could determine what makes a better thumb wrestler. Just pick one of those and write your alternative hypothesis in the book, in the book, in the box. So for example, whoever has the longer hair will win more thumb wrestling matches. Um, and then I want you to design an experiment that would test that alternative hypothesis. Now, I don't want you to actually carry out the experiment, just design it. Um, and you wanna write down information of your experimental design such that someone on the other side of the world speaking another language, like maybe Chinese, and they just had a translator to translate between Chinese and English, they would be able to exactly carry out your experiment just given the information you provided. So you want to make sure you include important information like how many people you test, how you test it, how you do the conduct the thumb wrestling matches, how you conduct the measurements um, of the people within the study, things like that. Um, you do not need to put down that you used a ruler from Carolina Biological Supply because that makes no difference, right? A ruler's a ruler. Doesn't matter whether it's um, from Carolina Biological Supply or a Fisher catalog, right? So only include the important things, but make sure you include all the important things. And then also make sure you're including replication and control. Those are the two essential elements of any good experiment. Okay, so that's the first part of your lab one activity. And um, I'm going to now give you a second. Take care, bye-bye.